Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Sean coming at you from Adley Studios and in today's Studio One sessions we are going to cover how to hook up an external MIDI source. In this case it's an external drum set. I use a set of Roland TD-11s and I just kind of want to take you into uh, how, how that whole thing gets set up inside Studio One and that's coming up right now. <laughs> Okay guys, we're back. So let's dive right in here and have a look around. So we're gonna be on our home screen inside Studio One. First thing I'm gonna do is come down to the bottom here and where, where it says uh, configure audio device and configure external devices. So you're gonna go ahead and click on uh, the external devices tab or the uh, link and then the when this window is gonna open up. And in here, right now I have it blank and uh, I'll show you why in a second. And because I just want to, you know, do this from scratch so you guys can kind of follow along and learn learn what's what's all involved here. So make sure you're on the external devices um, up here and we're going to hit simply add. So when this window opens up, there's going to be a whole bunch of um, providers, you know, of, of different MIDI controllers, if you will. And believe it or not, Roland, uh, as big as they are, does not show up in my list. So... Fear not, what do you do? Um, we just go up to the top and we'll just hit new keyboard. I'll highlight that and I'll come over to the right side and it says new keyboard here and I'm gonna go manufacture. I'm gonna type in Roland and hit my tab button and then it's gonna say keyboard name, device name. I will call that a TD-11, okay? That's the name of my drums. Then, you know, it looks like a keyboard, which is fine. It doesn't look like a drum set. But uh, MIDI channels, I'm going to leave that set to all because we want we want all the MIDI information we can come out of the kit and into the program. And so receive from, in my case, I have a USB Uno MIDI interface. And that is just a simple MIDI patch cable that goes from, uh, from the MIDI controller. You know, it's got the 7 pin on it and then it goes into a USB. That's all it is. It just converts it over to uh, digital. And uh, don't worry about any of the aftertouch program change, any of these things here. We're just going to get the signal in and then deal with everything in, in, the, uh, in the DAW itself in, in that regard. So send to, I'm going to also click USB. Um, when you do that, when, once you hook, when you hook your device up, it will show up in this list. If it does not show up in this list, you kind of got to go, go backwards and find out why it's not showing up in, in this list. But trust me, they, they, all, they all show up. It's, it's a pretty nice uh, interface. And split the channels. I will leave that deselected and default instrument put it. Uh, default instrument input, I will leave that deselected as well because I kind of go back and forth between my keyboard that I have and my drum set. So I don't need to bother clicking on that at this point. I'm going to hit OK. Now, as you see, it shows up in here uh, in, in this screen. And if it does say, you know, un, uh, what does it say? Not connected, it might say in this screen here, in this little portion of the screen where the send to is, um, then you'll have to kind of go back in. You'll hit edit and you go back in because the first time I did it, I did this, right? I hit none and then I hit okay. And now there you go. See, it says not connected and it's like, okay, I know what I forgot to do, so I got to go back in and actually select my device. Then hit OK. And everything is there. If it was not connected, it would say not connected. I can hit the reconnect button. This message will come up. It'll hit OK. Just pardon me for a second. Got to make sure my drum set is on. And it is. I see the light on back there. Okay, so now that is there. I'm going to hit OK, and we should be good to go. Brings us back to our song page. I'm going to hit create new song and we're going to call this uh, MIDI drum setup. Okay. And we'll keep this stuff all the same as some of our previous videos and all I'm going to do is hit OK. Okay, now we're inside Studio One and as you can see, it's an empty song page. So first thing I'm going to do is bring pull up my mixer on the bottom here, bottom right hand side, just to get my mixer. This is where all my channels are going to show up my mixing channels 
Okay, so next thing we need to do is, is add a track to it. And it has to be a MIDI track. And you'll see that right here. Looks like a little piano roll when you kind of highlight it. Um, it needs to be this instrument track because it is MIDI information, which is a lot of ones and zeros and data. It cannot be a, a wave track with the audio track up here where it's stereo and mono. You cannot do that. It has to be instrument track. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now it's added an instrument track instrument track in here. And if I drop down my input here for all inputs, it says there's my TD-11, right? So I'm going to click on that for my TD-11. And as it is, I could play it just like that, but I want to put a, a sound engine in behind it um, just because it's going to sound a lot better. Trust me, it will. Um, my instruments tab here and I am going I'm, I'm going to pick a VST from a third party it's uh, a superior drummer or easy drummer is what I'm going to pick um, only because I really like the sound of it I mean I'm pretty sure you could pick something something from personas exactly yeah you definitely could uh, but you know what, for the sake of this video, I'm, I'm just, I, I need to pick what I know here. So I'm going to pick, uh, pick superior drummer up and I'm going to drag that over to my track and just drop it on there. And superior opens up. I've got a kick, a snare. I got toms going, right? And what I need to do now is go and check to make sure that's actually triggering that from my drum. So bear with me. I should have probably taken the camera with me over there, but it was triggering, so that is good. And so that's kind of how that works. Okay, so as long as you've got the feed coming in, you know you're good to go as far as recording goes. I'm going to really quickly change up my my tone here. I'm going to pick, uh, I've got a, a um, actually this rock solid kit is pretty good. Nice and Nice and deep, right? Okay guys, now that we got the signal coming in, um, let's go try and record something. I'm actually gonna take the camera with me. And take you guys with me over here and let's Okay, so now that we're back, um, Here's the MIDI information up in the top of the screen here. And uh, let's play it back and we'll just have a listen to what we, what we just put down behind me there on the drums. So there it is. Okay. Timing isn't right and everything like that, but that's okay. For the sake of the video, you get the idea behind how to do this. Uh, if you needed to edit something, you just double click on it. Opens up the actual edit window here and you can see these these marks are the one on the one on the downbeat. And you, as you can see, I'm not really in time with it, but that's what's nice about MIDI because now I can go in and actually move these beats to the one, right? Actually, this should be over here like that. And getting in and doing the timing on all these guys uh, to figure out how that all works, that's a whole nother tutorial. Um, and I will get more in depth with that as, as we go through some future videos. Um, I think before we get into the actual editing piece of it, we probably need to go back and look at, at the uh, superior drummer and easy drummer and just using a regular keyboard to actually input this information because then you can do it that way as well. Uh, this is just how I work. It's not it's not the perfect way or not the right way. It's just how I work. And uh, yeah, it's actually a really cool tool. MIDI is not a bad thing. It'd be great to have a live drummer down here, but I mean, come on, my room is 10 by 12 feet. 
and uh, my upstairs family I don't think would appreciate that too much um, I've got a I've got a drummer across the street just on the corner uh, from me here that if I want live tracks I can get live tracks you know at all but this is how I work so uh, I think that's probably it for today's video I hope you liked what you what you saw today hopefully you can learn a little piece of this um, how easy it is to set up a MIDI controller or a MIDI device just to input the information into your DAW so you can do something with it. Um, you know, once you find your, once you move all your nodes around and you kind of edit things and to your piece of music, then we, in a future video, we'll get about how to bounce that all down. I render it down to a uh, single track. So you got full control over your bass drum, full control over your snare and your overheads and your toms. Each drum is a separate channel. Uh, right now we're dealing with it as one channel, which is kind of why I'm using the superior drum engine in this case. Uh, it just, it sounds better. It sounds beefier, right? Okay, so um, I think that's probably good for today. And uh, as always, if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the notification bell if that's your thing, you know, just to get notified of when and where my videos come out. Again, I'm trying to do one a day. Um, I know I got four up last week, but I had to do a lot of behind the scenes editing um, in conjunction with my uh, with my my website as well. So I apologize I didn't get five. I really wanted to get five. Uh, so today's, you know, Monday. And so here's the, the first one of the week. Um, tomorrow, I'm hoping to drop another, uh, my second vlog, uh, going to be dropping as well as another quick tutorial. So I'll be actually dropping two tomorrow. Hopefully I can get that done. And, uh, as always, you guys take care and thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.